America bids farewell to a hero. Ronald Reagan, 40th President of the United States, begins his final journey to the West. President Reagan's greatest legacy was giving America back its optimism and its sense of pride. He made us feel good about ourselves again. When that flag went by, we all stood a little taller. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. President Reagan was a statesman of the first order. Persuasive, disarming, instinctive. He inspired America and the entire world with the clarity of his vision and his sense of direction and purpose. We have lost a great president, a great American, and a great man. And I have lost a dear friend. He inspired America and its allies with renewed faith in their mission of freedom. I was always struck by his style and grace, his strength of character. He brought hope to a dispirited world, and he did it with incredible dignity. Ronald Reagan ended the Cold War. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The Iron Curtain came down for good. And the special joy I felt was that the answer came in my own lifetime. President Reagan was one superb negotiator. Indeed, he could charm the birds out of the trees, but it was his idealism and his endless strength and courage that put America and the world on the road to a lasting peace. Ronald Wilson Reagan, with his style and grace, he made it seem easy. With his compassion and sense of timing, he brought strength of character to the nation and enkindled hope in a darkened world. While others worried, President Reagan persevered. When others weakened, President Reagan stood tall. When others stepped back, President Reagan stepped forward. And he did it all with great humility, with great charm, and with great humor. Ronald Reagan spoke of a nation that was hopeful, big-hearted, idealistic, daring, decent, and fair. That was how he saw America, and that is how America came to know him. There was a kindness, simplicity, and goodness of character that marked all the years of his life. And in this national vigil of mourning, we show how much America loved this good man and how greatly we will miss him. We never got tired of listening to him. He always spoke with such ease and good cheer. And that smile, that twinkle in his eye, pure vintage Reagan. In a life of good fortune, he valued above all the gracious gift of his wife, Nancy. President and Mrs. Reagan were the most loving couple you could ever be around. I never knew a couple so close as they were. And she loved him and they loved each other and they set a great example of how a couple can love each other through thick and thin. I can't imagine life without her. Ronald Reagan belongs to the ages now. We preferred it when he belonged to us. We know, as he always said, that America's best days are ahead of us. But with Ronald Reagan's passing, some very fine days are behind us, and that is worth our tears. Ronald Reagan believed in America, so he made it his shining city on the hill. He believed in freedom. 
so he acted on behalf of its values and ideals. As his vice president for eight years, I learned more from Ronald Reagan than from anyone I encountered in all my years of public life. I learned kindness. We all did. I also learned courage. The nation did. the heavens were weeping as we paid our farewell to your servant, Ronald Reagan. We have come from sea to shining sea to this soil which he loved so much and where his body will remain. knew how deeply Ronnie loved America and the American people, but I was so touched to see how much they loved him in return. People of all races and from different countries, people we knew and thousands we'd never met, all anxious to reach out to Ronnie one last time. Our family's sense of loss is immense and is difficult to put into words. From being governor of the largest state in the country to being president of the United States for eight years, he somehow remained the same wonderful man. We did more than just pass through. We got America moving again. We breathed new life into our economy and put more people to work than ever before in history. We rebuilt our military strength and brought the world a little closer together in peace. But above all, more than anything else, we got America to stand tall again. And you know, I'd like to think that maybe that's the thing I'm proudest of. Because the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. The men who died, who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S. From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Well, there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say Today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the U.S.A. We are five days away 
from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. The American people create jobs, not government. Would you reappoint Ben Bernanke? I would fire him tomorrow. I think the Fed should be audited. I'm not particularly worried about Governor Perry and Governor Romney frightening the American people when, when President Obama scares them every single day. When I was speaker, we added 11 million jobs in a bipartisan effort, including welfare reform, the largest capital gain tax cut in history. We balanced the budget for four straight years. How would the country feel today at 4.2 percent unemployment? That's my credential. I'm going to outline a 21st century contract with America. It's going to be far bolder, far deeper, far more profound than what we did in 1994 or what I helped Jack Kemp and Ronald Reagan do in 1980. I am very much in favor of school choice. My personal preference would be to have a Pell Grant for K through 12 so that every parent could pick with their child any school they wanted to send them to. I think unemployment compensation should be tied directly to a training program so that that 99 weeks becomes an investment in human capital giving us the best trained workforce in the world but I believe it is fundamentally wrong to give people money for 99 weeks for doing nothing. Congress this year, this next week, ought to repeal the Dodd-Frank bill, they ought to repeal the Sarbanes-Oxley bill, they ought to start creating jobs right now because for those 14 million Americans this is a depression now. Well, I'm frankly not interested in your effort to get Republicans fighting each other. I, for one, and I hope all of my friends up here, are going to repudiate every effort of the news media to get Republicans to fight each other to protect Barack Obama, who deserves to be defeated, and all of us are committed as a team. Whoever the nominee is, we are all for defeating Barack Obama. more than election night when Barack Obama loses decisively. Support for Newt Gingrich in Iowa may be dropping, but he's about to get one very big endorsement tomorrow from Ronald Reagan's top economist, Art Laffer. In his first interview ahead of that endorsement, Art is here. Great to see you, Art. Why Newt Gingrich? Good to see you. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Excuse me? Why Newt Gingrich? Well, I just think he's got the best economic plan of any of the candidates. And Welcome back to Hannity. Amid all the campaign chaos, Newt Gingrich has picked up a much-needed endorsement from former Oklahoma Congressman J.C. Watts. I am looking for someone that's prepared to do the heavy lifting to get us where we all want to be and I think where we need to be. And when you consider in Washington Day around the country today, we're talking about balanced budgets, paying down our national debt, getting the economy going, you know, defending ourselves, uh, activist judges. Newt Gingrich did all those things when he was speaker. We were the American people create jobs, not government. Okay. Now, it starts very simple. Lower taxes, less regulation, an American energy plan, and actually be positive about people who create jobs. Uh, the opposite of the Obama plan. Nothing will turn America around more than election night when Barack Obama loses decisively.